Swiftmeisters, this is Prof. Gene, and this lesson you'll conquer a series of challenges. We'll also learn about trailing closures, button styles, H-stacks, and more. So let the goodness begin. And this is where we were at the end of the last lesson, when we learned about states and buttons, we were able to write code where the text view started off displaying, you are great, and when the button was pressed, it changed to, you are awesome. So now we're ready for a series of challenges, and challenges in this course will be frequent. So here's some advice. First, do them. Pause when you see the pause button, then resume and compare your solution against the one shown. Also, watch the solutions even if you've got the challenge. I often introduce new concepts in the solutions and you don't want to miss these. My students in class will be expected to know all new concepts introduced during solutions. And you can always play the video back at double speed if you're feeling confident in your solution. Don't worry too much if you didn't solve a challenge. This is very common when you're learning, but do be sure to try it again. Retry the challenge after you've watched the solution. You can also try it later in the day or the next day, but do try it again until you have the answer down cold. And finally, practice is key. You wouldn't learn a foreign language without regular conversation and reading practice. Coding is the same way. And now on to that first challenge. Modify your code so that instead of reading, you are great, it starts out blank. But then, when you run an interactive preview mode and you click the press me button, change the text view so that it reads, you are great. So pause and give this a try. Then when you're done, press resume and we'll compare answers. First, we want to change how the text view looks when our code first runs, so let's change how we initialize the state variable. Instead of initializing message string with the string you are great, let's put nothing between these double quotes. We still need double quotes in there though. A string with no characters between quotes is called an empty string. It's still a string, but it's a string with no characters. And now you'll notice in the live preview that there's nothing inside of that text view. Looking good. And then the only other change we need is to go down here into the button action between these curlies, the button action is only a single line, and now we're going to set the message string so that it equals the string, you are great. We start out with the text being empty. When we click the button, we see you are great. Cool. If this didn't work as expected, make sure you rewatch the video and try again so that you understand these concepts before moving on. Now that button is super boring, so let's jazz it up. And there's a special modifier called button style, and Apple has predefined a few styles that we can quickly set up to make buttons look like some of the most common button styles that you'll see in apps. So let's try this out. Since we're modifying the button, we can add the modifier below it. So click and press return after the curly that closes the code that executes when we press the button, then press the period or dot, and Xcode will show us a list of available options. What's nice about code completion is that if you forgot the exact name of a command or a method, you can browse and see what's available. I can also narrow this down by making some guesses for what I'm looking for. So for example, I can just type style as a guess and Xcode shows me all of the options that contain style. Now you can scroll for a bit and you'll find button style in there. Or of course, if you remembered, you could just type dot button style and you'll see this too. Now code completion says that this will set the style for the button and between parentheses I see primitive button style which is actually a data type that refers to button styles. And fortunately dot notation works here too and that will also bring up some predefined button styles that we can use. So let's check this out. First I'm going to press return to accept a button style. Code completion enters this and highlights the area in between parens where we can add a button style. Then let's press a period to see if Xcode will suggest some predefined styles and it does. So we can try these out. Automatic takes whatever is the current default. Dot plane removes the blue tint from the button, but if you click the button, it still works. Dot borderless is what we had before, blue tint but no border. But the fancier ones are dot bordered. We see this gives me a gray background and a blue tinted text. And also dot bordered prominent gives us a blue tinted background and white text. And in future videos, we'll show how we can offer even more customization for buttons, but let's use border prominent here. And so now we're ready for another challenge. This will be the two button challenge. So modify your code so that the text view should still start out initially empty. Then change the label of the button to read off. Awesome. And when that button is pressed, change the text view to read, you are awesome. Then add a second button below the existing button, give that button the label great. And when that button is pressed, change the text view to read, you are great. So once you pause, give that a shot and resume when you're done and let's compare answers. So now we're still starting out with a message string empty, so we don't need to change where we declare and initialize our state variable, but let's change the string that represents the label of the button press me to awesome. 
And in the action area in between the curlies, we'll change the string to read you are awesome. And now let's add a second button below this. Now we could use the library to add the button as we did the first time, or I could copy all these lines that represent the button view that we've created, paste it below, and just modify the things I want to change. But instead I want to show you that we can type the button code in directly, so why don't we do that? I'll start by typing in button and open parentheses, and whoa, we've got a lot of different options in here to create a button. Now there are a lot of different ways to set up a button, and each one of these options shows the parameters or inputs we need to create a button using the different button creation methods shown on each line. And I'm going to select this option here that shows two inputs separated by a comma title and action. Now remember your code completion list might be in a different order and it might look slightly different if you're using a different version of Xcode, but you should be able to scroll and find the title action option. Now if we look at the code completion description we see title colon string protocol. So this means the first input is title, that's going to be our button title, and the colon string protocol means that that title input needs to be of data type string. And if you're wondering about the underscore in front of title, not many tutorials talk about that, but it's pretty important. When there's an underscore before a function input, that means that particular function input doesn't have a label in front of it. You'll just enter the value. When there's no underscore, like we see with the second value over here, action, you'll see the label action followed by a colon, and you shouldn't delete the label and colon. If you do delete the label and colon, you'll get an error and your code won't work. I'll point this out again in future videos, and you'll also learn how to write functions that either require a label or that use the underscore for no label. Now the second input after the comma is an action input, followed by empty parentheses and arrow and void. Now don't get too confused about this syntax right now. This just means that the action will be a block of code, and we know we can write one or more lines of code in between curly braces here. We've been using that, and we also mentioned in an earlier video that we call code between curly braces a closure in Swift. Now in this case, that closure is going to be the code that executes as an action whenever the button is pressed. So I'll press return to accept this option and Xcode writes the code for me. So now I see the first input for title and it's entirely highlighted in blue. And as soon as I start to type here, all of that blue stuff is gonna go away and it's gonna be replaced by whatever I type. There's no separate input label in front of this. And we knew that would be the case because there was an underscore in front of this parameter when we looked at it in code completion. So since this requires a string, I'm just gonna enter the string for the button label that I want, which is great. And remember, strings are between double quotes. Then I'm gonna tab over to the next input. And look, we've got action in front of this. It's a label that's outside of this area that's now highlighted in blue, and we need to keep that action in there. Again, there was no underscore in front of this parameter. That's why we're seeing the action colon show up. So now I'm going to take a second for a detour to point out how we can reformat Apple's initially suggested format for setting up this button into something that most developers use. And most consider this to be an easier to read format. That's this thing called the trailing closure format. Now this might seem like a detour, but you're really going to want to see how to do this. Since most developers, code examples and tutorials that you might see online, or even firms that you're going to work with, have all probably standardized on the trailing closure format. Now the format we were given looks like this. So we see action colon, and it's followed by parentheses and arrow and void. Now this just means that the action will be a block of code. Remember we passed that in between curly braces the first time we wrote it? Now there's a bit more to reading this, but we'll put that off until later. Now I could format things like you see here with my action in curlies within the closing parentheses, and after the string for the button label, we've got a comma and we've got the label action with a colon in front of the curlies, but most developers think this is a clunky way to write things. Most prefer the format that you see down here. This is called the trailing closure format. Now in Swift, a closure is just a block of code between curlies, and when creating a button view, we just pass that block of code in, and that block of code is gonna be used to execute as the action when the button's pressed. Now the trailing closure format, it puts the closing parenthesis after the title, and then starts with a curly, ends with a curly, and in between the curlies we put any code we want to use as an action, and also look what's missing. We don't have a comma at the end, and we don't have our label or colon. There's also no parenthesis at the end of the closing curly, but there is in the standard format above. Now Xcode will actually switch to the trailing closure format. All you need to do is press return when you've tabbed into and highlighted an input with parens, arrows, and void, or you can double click on that input if you'd like. So let's do this now. In Xcode, I've highlighted the parens arrow void parameter. I could double click on this or just press return and look at that. Xcode reformats this for me into that nice trailing closure format that most people prefer. And in between the curlies for my closure, I'm gonna have actually the same statement that I have up here. So I'm gonna highlight and copy uh, the message string equals you are awesome, paste it in down below, but then change the string you are awesome to you are great. And now to get our button to look like the one above it, I could copy and paste the button style line too, but instead after the trailing closure curly, I'll just type dot 
button style, select this, and then in between the parentheses, I can use dot notation to pull up predefined styles, and I'm gonna select bordered prominent. So now our preview is looking good. When our code first runs, we have our state variable message string set to an empty string. When we press the awesome button, it should execute our action closure here in the awesome button and put the data you are awesome in the message string state variable. And since the state variable's data should change, this will trigger Swift UI to redraw the screen. Let's try this out, click the button, and boom shakalaka, that's exactly what happens. Outstanding. Then when we click on the great button, this closure down here for the great button should execute and indeed it does my friend you are great you are awesome you are great awesome great awesome great the app knows and if you click the play button to restart the live preview from the beginning our code executes anew so that's why we don't see anything in our text view but everything continues to work just as expected excellent work swifter and so here's another challenge at the end to encourage you to do some experimentation. This is the side-by-side -side challenge. So I want you to modify your code so that the two buttons, awesome and great, show side-by-side. -side. Now, we haven't done this together yet, but here's your hint. We saw earlier that in addition to vStacks, there were other types of stacks that could be used to stack views in other orientations. So can you put one of those other stacks inside of your vStack and use that for a horizontal orientation of your buttons? Why don't you give that a shot, pause, try it out, resume, and let's compare answers. Now you see how we have a V stack here? Well, we wanna add a horizontal stack or H stack inside the V stack and right after the text view. And inside the curlies of that H stack, we wanna put all this code for our two buttons. So I'm gonna make some space in here and then I'm gonna type in H stack, capital H, capital S, and then open and close curlies. And I can highlight all the lines for both of the buttons. So make sure that you get from the start of the first button to the button style modifier of the second button cut that code command X, then go up in between the curlies, paste that in with a command V. Let's look at the preview, looking great. And just so that you know, you always have options. I'm gonna undo what I just did, and then I'm gonna go back up and command click on that first button, and I'm gonna choose embed in H stack from the quick actions menu. I'll just have to highlight this code for the second button and push it up so that it's inside the closing curly for the H stack. It's just important to make sure that your curlies match up, but either way would work great. Great. and we see that our buttons declare that you are both awesome and great. So just to make sure that everyone's understanding how this code lays out our interface, I'll shrink the font down just a smidge so you can see all the code on one page. And now on the outside, we have this V stack. Oops, let me click a button over here in preview so that we can see the text view. And now this text view shows up as the first view in the V stack. And the second view in the V stack is an H stack. And that contains two additional views organized horizontally. Those are two buttons side by side. See that? nested stacks, and a neatly organized user interface. That's some Swift UI goodness. So Swift Scholar, I hope you're feeling skilled. You conquered three challenges, a change the message challenge, a two button challenge, and an H stack challenge, which was notable because we didn't have a lesson on the H stack. Now we also learned and used the empty string. We explored and used various button styles. We dove deep into the trail enclosure format so that you can now better understand what we're seeing in code completion and how to get these things to format in the trail enclosure format that developers like so much. And as mentioned, we learned about H stacks. Keep hacking, my Swifty friend. There's more code goodness to come.